Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be tier ranking book tropes you see in romance books. So I actually made all these trope cards down below that has a lot of popular tropes that you'll see out there in the romance world. I did tropes instead of like subcategories of romance. So that's why you won't see fantasy romance or sports romance, hockey romance, because I feel like those are subcategories of romance, not necessarily tropes, if you know what I mean. So these are just tropes you would see in a romance book. And I actually have this list available, this tier, make, tier ranking list available for y'all. The link for it will be down below where you can maybe make your own videos or just do it for fun of tier ranking. All of these, the cards will be the same. The categories will be the same. You can change the categories, change the pictures, whatever you want to do. But I thought this would just be really fun to tier rank these tropes and show y'all what's my favorite and maybe what's not my favorite when it comes to romance tropes. Okay, so let's kind of go in order maybe. I don't know. I like jumping around, honestly, in these tier ranking videos. So Friends to Lovers is number one, and that is an all-time favorite for me. Do not hate on the Friends to Lovers train. I love Friends to Lovers. I think it's honestly because that's something I would like to experience in real life. I'm just waiting for a man to become friends with and then we fall in love. Okay. I'm just, I'm waiting for that. Okay. So I love Friends to Lovers. So many of my favorite books are Friends to Lovers. Royalty. I would say I like royalty romances. I have some of them are my all time favorite books ever. Like I'm thinking of the Royally series by Emma Chase. And then I'm thinking of a few Karina Halley books that are really good. Um, but there are, have been a few like duds for me. So I don't think it's like an all time favorite for me. Whereas like Friends to Lovers, like more so slaps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bully romance. Right now it's okay. I've read a few and I've only really liked one, the Jessica K novella one. Ooh, I would die over that one. I read Punk 57 by Penn Douglas. That one was okay. Um, I just honestly don't like romance books really set in high school. So like leave your recommendations down below for the tropes that like I have down here and like it's okay or not my thing. Leave recommendations below because I want these tropes to be my thing. I want to like them, okay? Um, forbidden, I would say I like forbidden romances. I really do. I don't like necessarily think of, I love it when I think of them, but a lot of the books that I read are forbidden. Sometimes I get frustrated because sometimes the characters are like really dumb with the fact that it's forbidden and, and keeping it a secret from people that they shouldn't really care about. You know what I mean? For example, brother's best friend, like who gives a crap if you're dating your brother's best friend? Like why keep it a secret? You know what I mean? Ooh, forced proximity is all time favorite. I love, love this trope so much. It adds so much angst and tension. Like I'm thinking of Always Only You by Chloe Lisa, that book with Ren and Frankie and like she has to move in with him. So, so good. And, and especially ones, there's like that situation where you have to move in with somebody, but there's also the ones like you're snowed in together or there's a rainstorm and like a historical romance, there's like a rainstorm and you're stuck in a cab. And like, I'm thinking of My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed amazing. Um, Hero Falls First, I love this trope. I love it. It's so good. Um, just because I love being in the hero's head. This only works, by the way, if it's in first person. Because honestly, how would I know if the hero falls first if it's not in first person? In the hero's perspective, at least. And so I love reading about a man just absolutely becoming obsessed with his love interest. Like, absolutely obsessed with it. Language Barrier, <laughs> all-time fave, because this goes with alien romance. <laughs> I don't know why, like this trope is a hit for me. I love it so much. There's something about like not even be able to fully communicate, but still falling for each other that I absolutely adore. Like this trope is so common in alien romances and I love it. I love it so much. Love triangle. We're going to have our first not my thing. It's not my thing. Cause honestly with love triangles, I feel like there's such an obvious choice where it doesn't really feel like a love triangle. I've only read one where I truly didn't know who she was going to choose. And that was the Candy Steiner like duet one. That one, I truly had no idea who she was going to choose. So I actually really liked those. But a lot of other love triangles, like you already know who she's honestly going to pick. So why call it a love triangle? <laughs> like what's this other dude doing? Honestly, single dad. I love the single dad trope. It's like something about a single dad. Like watching a very attractive man, like be an amazing dad. Whew. It's my heart racing. I love it. And I also really do love the single mom trope as well. I just love watching reading. <laughs> Avery, it's reading. You can picture it in your head. What is reading, Avery? Um, reading about like someone having a kid and their love interest coming into their life. 
and fully falling in love with that person and also their kid. Like, I absolutely adore that. Ooh, one bed, all time favorite. I feel like this is gonna be common for other people. One bed is a very good trope. I don't know what it is. It's like, I think it's also like forced proximity. Like, I'm thinking of the scene in Akamath. <laughs> That scene lives in my head rent free. I have so many uh like fan drawings of that scene specifically saved on my phone. It's embarrassing. So enemies to lovers. I do love enemies to lovers. I do. I think friends to lovers is superior. Do not fight me on this. You're not gonna change my mind. Um, because sometimes enemies to lovers isn't really enemies to lovers. I feel like a lot of the time when you read enemies to lovers, that books that are marketed as enemies to lovers, it's not actually enemies to lovers. <laughs> like they maybe are enemies for like 0.5 seconds, not even enemies. Like enemies, I feel like they have to absolutely despise one another with their whole entire being. Like I'm thinking of Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. Like that is enemies. Like I'm trying to kill you, enemies to lovers. And a lot of these books that are marketed as enemies to lovers aren't really, they're more like, I don't really like you, I hate you. And then 10 minutes later, you're falling for each other. Like that's not true enemies to lovers for me. So I feel like honestly, I love I love the enemies to lovers trope, but I feel like a lot of books are marketed as enemies to lovers when they're not. Rejected mates. I'm putting it in, I love it. It could go an all time favorite if again, marking for it or like the description of the rejected mate trope was done correctly because the way that i think of rejected mate trope is um you find out your fated mates with somebody and then they reject you and then there's like an ultimate grovel where they win you back and it's the same person you have a relationship with a lot of rejected mate romances that i've researched online because i want to find more because i love this trope is of someone being rejected by their fated mate and then they get with somebody else and that's their romance like, no, that is not a rejected mate romance. The mate has to grovel their butt off because they rejected them. That That's what it's supposed to be. But I, I absolutely love this trope. I love it so much. An example of this one is The Tyrant Alpha's Rejected Mate by Casey Wells. I need to read the rest of that series, but that one is so good. Second Chance is okay for me. I feel bad saying that. Second Chance is okay. It's fine. I honestly haven't found that many favorites. I'm a big person with like groveling, right? Like I love a good grovel, like beg on your knees, get you back. And I think there's always going to be like an opportunity for someone to do that. You know, like you hurt somebody in the past, show that you've grown, that you've changed, that you're different people than you were years ago when you were together, married, dating, whatever the case may be. And there is a chance to show that you've changed or grown um, that both of you have. But part of you is also like, have you though? Have you? <laughs> have you <laughs> so that's always the inkling in the back of my mind but there is also a point there are a few second chance romances i actually really do love because i feel like there is a part of the trope where the person has actually changed for the better or their circumstances have changed or i don't know they've grown up as people like they dated in high school and they're now mature adults you know what i mean that was a long tangent but there are sometimes second chance romances that i cannot get on board with because i'm like i don't think you've changed from when y'all were together previously and there's a reason why the relationship didn't work out and i are together like what's the point <laughs> So I just love to see character growth and character change. That's why I do love some second chance romances, but not all of them. Workplace romance, like I like them. They can be fun. It can also be with like forbidden because a lot of workplace romances are forbidden. Sometimes I do like the office setting. Sometimes I don't because office settings kind of seem boring to me. Nanny romances, all time favorite. Okay, nanny romances, all time favorite. It's normally linked with the single dad romance trope. Like normally they're linked together. So nanny, love it so much. I've been a nanny in the past. I just, I love kids and I love seeing them in books when they're done well. There are nanny romances that I don't care for because I can, I'm reading this book. I'm like, this author has definitely not been around kids. Like a seven-year-old would not be saying what's coming out of that child's mouth. <laughs> I just have worked with kids so long in my life. I don't have a kid of my own, but like I work with kids. So like, I think I know like the ins and outs of how their little brains work sometimes. So I just love nanny romances. The nanny romances are okay. Don't get me wrong. I would love a billionaire man. Like, yes, duh. But <laughs> when they're in romances, sometimes they are too entitled or a, like 
very cocky for me. Like I'm not for honestly, like the alpha male cockiness is not really my type. And so that's why they're just like, okay, for me, find me really good ones where the hero doesn't act like that, please. Best friends to enemies to lovers is all time fave. I only read like three of these because these are a rarity, rarity, but I love them. I'm thinking of Dark Sky by Cressley Cole. Huh, that one is so stinking good. Um, but yeah, when you're best friends and they turn to enemies and they turn to lovers, this isn't a lot of like paranormal and fantasy romances. You don't really see this in contemporary ones, but these are really good. Arranged marriage. I like arranged marriage romances. Neva Altaj has a lot of those and I like her mafia, mafia books have a lot of arranged marriages, especially um, also marriage of convenience is another one. I'll link these two together. There is a difference by the way. Arranged marriage is like your families are forcing you to get married. You know what I mean? Very much prevalent in mafia world. And the marriage of convenience is like, y'all both have your reasons for getting married, whether it be like, like I just read one because um, a girl needed health insurance. So the hero marries her to help her get health insurance because he has health insurance and she doesn't and she needs it. Um, so like you have your own reasons for getting married. So I do love, I love married couple romances. So these ones can be really good. Secret baby. Okay. Secret baby is okay. There's a difference. This is surprise baby down here. And secret baby is this one. Secret is when you're keeping your pregnancy secret from your partner or whoever is the father of the baby. This one's fine. It's not my favorite because I don't like secret keeping. I'm not a fan of secrets. Like, I don't get people to keep secrets. Just be honest. Tell people how you feel. You know what I mean? Why keep it a secret? It's not my thing. There is one that I think did it really well was um, Bloody Heart by Sophie Lark. That one was actually pretty good um, because she was scared about her baby's life. So that's why she didn't tell him because he's a part of the mafia. She's like, I don't want my baby to die. So I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> so I get that. There's like a few that I actually like, but most of the time I'm like, why are you keeping this a secret? Are you just being petty because you don't want the dad to know? But surprise baby, I now love this trope. <laughs> okay. I've read a lot of books with a surprise baby romance recently. And I love like Out on a Limb, Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake. There are so many that are really good actually. And I feel like this trope is slept on, but I get some people don't like this trope because Either they don't want kids, they don't care about the kids, they don't want the kids, you know what I mean? So I completely understand. And some people don't like Surprise Baby because they think like the only reason they would be together is because of the baby, which valid, valid reasons for not wanting to read it. I think I really love the ones where I think they'd get together regardless on if the baby was there or not. You know what I mean? So I love that one. I love that one a lot. My my feelings on Surprise Baby have changed. Fake dating, I've realized is okay. I feel like fake dating is such a big trope right now for authors. A lot of authors are writing fake dating romances and part of me is kind of sick of it and I feel bad for saying it, but I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> and sometimes the reason for fake dating is like, really? That's why you got to fake, I really, <laughs> it's not very believable to me. Like, some, like, I don't get it. I never, be, I never get into fake dating relationship with somebody. I wouldn't. That's also a lot of lying and secret keeping and stuff. So but there are a few, but I do like, like a few of these tropes. So age gap. I like age gap romances. I really do. Um, but they're not going to be like, someone tells me, oh, it's an age gap romance. It's not going to be like, oh, I need to read it right now. Like a handy romance book. You know what I mean? But a lot of the books I read do have like the added bonus of being an age gap, but like I could do without it, you know? Faded mates. It's all time fade. I love Fate of Mates. Okay. Ice Planet Barbarians is a love of mine. Okay. And that's full of Fate of Mates. I love it. I don't know why. It's like fate just telling you like, this is your person. You don't have to worry about finding anyone else because this is your perfect person. I need that, please. And also Assassin Turned Lover. <laughs> that one's an all-time favorite. This is like someone who is out to kill you or hired to kill you, whatever the case may be. And they fall in love with you instead. <laughs> yes. Like Whispers of the Deep by Emma Ham. That one's like a mermaid. Merman, he's a merman and she's a human woman and he's trying to kill her. And then he ends up kidnapping her. That book is so good. It's like one of my favorite books of the year so far. Small town, I like small town romances. Um, I live in a small town myself. And I just like, sometimes <laughs> I feel like a lot of people who don't live in a small town, they read these and are like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. I want to move to a small town. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. It has its benefits, but I feel like small towns are so boring. Very boring. It doesn't have a lot of the cutesy stuff that a lot of these small town romances have. And a lot of small towns are full of old people and families. A lot of the time when I read small town romances, I find it so unbelievable because there is not going to be some very attractive men that are like single and ready to mingle and like 
haven't gotten married yet in a small town. Like most of the time, if you're in a small town, it's because you already have a family or you're already married or you're old, whatever the case may be. So I find it a little bit unbelievable that these very attractive men are all single in these small towns. But that's just me because I live in a small town. It kind of pops the, um, what's it called? Like pops the fantasy, if you will. Boyfriend's dad. I like boyfriend's dad romances. They can be fun. Like these are really fun. Grumpy sunshine, love. All time fave, Grumpy Sunshine, love it. If you tell me it's Grumpy Sunshine, I'll pick it up immediately. Same thing goes with like Black Cat, Heroin, Golden Retriever Hero, whoo, we'll eat that up. Captor Captive, I love a Captor Captive romance, like where one of the characters kidnaps the other and like they captured them. It's really fun. All these are in dark romances. Um, Sometimes they get a little bit too dark for me. So that's why it's not an all time favorite. <laughs> Cheating, oh, it's like, I'm going to kind of, I think I'm just going to put it in not my thing because there are very, 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 very few books where cheating is in it. That's not really my thing. I don't hate cheating. Like I won't not pick up a book because I found out there's cheating, but it has to be like for a reason. Sometimes the person is with a crappy person. You know what I mean? But part of me is also like, just dump them. Why would you just dump them? There are those ones where there's cheating because one of the characters is in an abusive relationship and they can't really get out of it. And so then they, they cheat on their spouse who's abusing them which screw that person. I don't care what happens to them. I don't care if they get cheated on if they're doing that, obviously. So those are fine. Like I don't see that as cheating. I'm like, this person is trying to get away from their abuser, obviously. And then bodyguard romances. I love a bodyguard romance. I love it so much. Again, you have a lot of forced proximity, a lot of tension. I eat that up. Let me know down below if I should have added any tropes because I probably missed some. Anyways, um, again, if you want to do this yourself, use these cards and this tier maker list. The link to it will be down below. You can go check it out. Let me know what you would put your all-time favorite tropes out of these. I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me. What are we going to do? Let's do a speech bubble emoji because I see the speech bubbles and language barrier. Anyways, uh, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.